Good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to Edinburgh Napier University MEC Business Management webinar. My name is Helen Sferopoulos, and I'm the Admissions Manager at Stafford Associates. And joining me this evening all the way from Edinburgh Napier University is Dr. Jackie Brody. Uh, good evening to you, Dr. Jackie. Good evening, Helen, and good evening to everyone who's taken the time to join us today. Right, and I'm looking on my right hand side here and I can see there's quite a lot of you that have joined us. Uh, thank you and good evening to you all. Um, how we're going to conduct the webinar this evening is I'm just going to briefly uh, tell you a little bit about Stafford Associates. I'm then going to hand you over uh, to Dr. Jackie who's going to talk about the program. And right at the end of the presentation, you will have the um, chance to actually type in any questions that you want to ask Jackie or myself. Uh, what I am going to do is look at your questions quite carefully because they tend to be similar if not identical. So I will be grouping the questions together. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, who is Stafford Associates? Well, Stafford Associates uh, was established in 1993 and we are a resource centre four five UK universities, one of which is the University of Edinburgh Napier. Uh, we actually do um, assist students uh, throughout the application process, not only in the Middle East, but as well as in Africa. And we do offer a variety of programs, ranging from certificates to diplomas, bachelors, MBAs, MECs, right through until doctorate. So we really do have uh, various programs for your personal and professional needs. Now, our main function here is to assist you throughout your um, application process. So the main reason that you are here today is because you have spoken to one of our experienced academic consultants. And we also do offer some administrative as well as academic support. I'm now going to hand you over to Dr. Jackie and I'll be back again towards the end of the webinar. Over to you. Thank you so much, Helen. That was great. And I'm, I'm so happy to be here, actually, and get this opportunity to speak to all of you um, about the MSc Business Management Programme. Um, I'm, I'm really excited at the moment. We've actually got 209 students on the programme that are all over the world. So it's it's just very, very exciting for all of us here at Edinburgh Napier to be able to share this programme with you. Um, but what I'm going to do today is actually explain some of the benefits and explain about the programme to you and, and see if that'll be of interest um, and fit into your life plans. Um, but just want to say a little bit about myself, actually, and um, this is what you'll see on the slide. So, um, well, I'm, I, my name is Jackie Brody, and as I said, I'm the MSc Business Management Online Programme Leader. Um, I'm Associate Professor in Entrepreneurship and Innovation here at Edinburgh Napier University Business School. Um, and I'm also the School Academic Lead for Learning and Teaching. So I have a wide range of remits and um, um, engaged in lots of different activities across the school. But my program is very dear to me and I just love the interactions that I'm currently having with my online students. And as I said, they're pretty much global and we can actually see that on a map, um, which I'll be showing you in a little while as I progress through this introduction to the program. Um, about myself though, I have a PhD in Information Systems Management um, from Brunel um, University. I've also got a Master's in Blended and Online Education um, from here at Napier University. And um, as you can see, my area of specialism um, is managing innovation. And I, I have a module on the MSc Business Management, which if you take the generalist route, then you will be studying with me. Um, you, you, I'm sure you'll, you'll enjoy it. It's got a lot to offer you. Um, we also, um, I'm also very interested in the area of creativity and I've taught that um, for many years to undergraduate students. Um, also the more general area of entrepreneurship, I teach that to the first year students. And of course, my absolute passion, my actual, my actual real interest is online learning and just freeing up that opportunity for you to keep and remain in your workplace, but also um, to study online and undertake my program. So it's a great pleasure, as I said, to give have this opportunity to tell you all about it. Um, but 
really, I want to start off with just telling you a little bit about um, Edinburgh Napier itself, um, where we're based, and even thinking about where we actually are in the world, um, because you might be quite far away from where I'm located at the moment. So I'm actually sitting at the moment just off continental Europe um, and, um, and part of the UK called Scotland, um, and you can see it on the diagram. And um, we have about six million people in Scotland. Um, um, we, we're quite well known, actually. We've got some of the oldest universities in the world, including, um, for example, um, St Andrews, Edinburgh University, places like that. But Edinburgh Napier itself is a very modern university, and it's really focused around supporting people and their employability. And um, this programme is designed to support that as well. So as you move through and as you hear a bit more about the programme, you'll, you'll get a glimpse into that and, and how we do that. OK, so that's us. We are are in Scotland and um, well Edinburgh Napier is in Scotland and we've act Scotland's actually been called the most beautiful country in the world so for those of you who have never seen Scotland before it's a very green place um, and it's, it's it's quite famous as well for um, the background of, of, of many movies including Braveheart but also the um, one movie that you can see a picture of here which is the Harry Potter um, movies um, they filmed um, the train sequences on the bridge um, in Scotland. We also have a world-renowned um, famous uh, monster, um, the Loch Ness Monster, um, and that is um, supposedly hiding out in the famous Loch Ness. Um, so we have a, a really beautiful, really vibrant um, country. And um, as I said, it's been voted one of the most beautiful countries in the world. So certainly it's somewhere for everyone to visit if they're interested. OK, so let me just um, move the slides on. All right. So thinking about Edinburgh Napier, thinking about um, where it's based. Well, we're in the capital city and that capital city is Edinburgh. Um, and that's only a one hour flight from London. So you can quite quickly come up to see us if you do decide to visit the UK at any point. Um, you can also get here by train and that's only a four hours. So not a long journey at all from the capital of the UK. But again, Edinburgh is a capital city in its own right. And we have been voted the best UK city for the past three years in one of our most important influential newspapers, the Daily Telegraph. Um, what you'll find about Edinburgh is um, it's home to several FTSE 100 tech startup companies and actually more than any other UK city outside London. So we've got lots of tech companies, we've got a lot of finance companies have their base here, um, obviously in such a beautiful setting. And um, you can actually see in this picture here, the really lovely castle, um, Edinburgh Castle, and that's on a hill and that overlooks the city. Um, we also have a palace. So we have a Royal Mile and at the end of the Royal Mile is a palace. And at the very top, as I said, is a castle. We're also home to the largest arts festival in the world, um, the Fringe Festival, you might have heard of it. And we're also home to the International um, Festival as well, um, where um, entertainers from throughout the world, including ballerinas, including um, orchestras, come to visit us in August. So it's it's a really beautiful place, and particularly around about graduation time as well, which would be the beginning of July, end of June, you'll see it um, come into full bloom and be very green um, city. Okay, so that was that was me talking about um, Edinburgh and Scotland, but let's talk now, let's focus in a little bit about um, on the university itself. Um, really interesting to know that the university started life really as a technical college way back in 1964 and um, several decades later it became a university and now it's um, the university that we know and love in 2019. Um, I perceive it as a university with lots of passion, lots of drive, really motivated to provide the best um, student experience for our students. Um, staff members are very professional. Um, you'll find that a lot of them have come from industry. Um, they were in the professions that they teach. So they were accountants, they were in banking, 
um, they were in managerial roles. Um, and so that's great because they can offer that expertise and put that into the classroom. Um, we're a very innovative organisation. Um, if you know our online offering, it just keeps growing and growing and growing. Um, and this is just one of the most successful programmes that we've got in the whole university, the programme that you're hearing about today. We're also very inclusive. We think it's really important um, to reach out and give everyone the opportunity to study an Edinburgh Napier University degree, which is um, why we're reaching out to you today. OK, so let's move on. Um, what, again, another really interesting fact, I think, about the university is that we are constantly striving to support our students. And we've actually been viewed as the number one in the UK for nurturing student talent. Um, the, um, again, another important newspaper here in the UK, the Guardian University Guide, in 2017, looked at the entry requirements, the way that people came in to the university, what qualifications they had at the very start, and then analysed that in terms of their final degree. And they actually saw us as top for adding value, adding to your learning as you study with us. And I think that's just like a really amazing achievement that we were able um, to accomplish um, for our students. So. Hopefully, again, you'll get that opportunity to experience that support and that sense of achievement. Um, we're well known for several things throughout um, Scotland and throughout the UK. Um, one of these, th one of the areas that are important to us is that we have a five QS star rating, and the five QS star rating covers areas such as our as our excellence in teaching, our excellent focus that we have on employability. Even though you're studying online, you still get access to career guidance, you still get access to um, career support, which I think is amazing. And um, we've also got a focus in the university and on this program, obviously uh, around international internationalisation, what you will find is many of the areas that you're taught will have an international flavour, an international flow focus, and often as well in terms of assessment, you'll have the opportunity during your assessment to reflect on companies, um, perhaps companies in, in your own country or, or companies, again, outside your own company, uh, country. So lots of opportunities there to have cross um, discussions with other people about um, companies who are, are who are potentially global, and um, we've also a winner of the Queen's Anniversary Prize, and we won that in 2015, and that was for our research in timber. Um, interestingly enough, I think we're the largest UK provider of higher education in Hong Kong, and um, we have had lots of our students um, go through that process, and. Um, I think we've uh, we've probably got about 4,000 students studying overseas at the moment, so a sizable number um, are not with us. And of course, we've got um, over 1,500 studying online with us as well. Um, in terms of research, um, our real goal is to improve lives, but not just in Scotland, not just in our local communities, but again, across the globe throughout the world. So hopefully um, what students have said to me is they were able to take all the really important things that they've learned on my module and put that back into their workplace, which is fantastic. Um, what we find is that um, six months after graduating, 95% of our graduates um, are in employment. And actually on this programme is 100% are in employment once they're queried about that six months after they complete so again we're 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 we are supporting your employability skills we're we are excellent in teaching and we try to make it an internationalized curriculum we also support startups um a few of my students have gone up to set up their own companies which have been great and we've actually supported 350 startup um, companies in 10 years. So that's quite an amazing figure. Um, thinking about the university, thinking about um, the structure of the university now, and I think this is just really useful information for you. So we're structured in a way that we're actually across three different campuses. Um, the Craig, Lock, Craig Lockhart campus, which is where we are based, is um, on a, a lovely sloping hill with the most gorgeous view of the castle. And um, we have put together um, a very prestigious old building, well known in the UK, and we have built on that um, a state-of-the-art lecture theatre 
and lecture rooms for our students. So a lovely mix of the old and the new in terms of the campus and um, that we are based in the business school. Um, but there's other campuses as well. The Site Hill campus is further out um, from the city centre and that provides support for um, nurses, so health and social care, and it also provides support for people who want to study degrees in science. Um, we also have another campus which is slightly nearer the town centre, supports the School of Computing, who if you're interested in the information systems um, uh, option that we've got in terms of with roots on the programme, then you'll be taught by, um, by academics in that school for those two uh, modules and for your dissertation. Uh, the Merkison campus is also home for the world-renowned School of Engineering and Built Environment and also finally the School of Arts and the Creative Industries and we train a lot of um, journalists here in the UK as well so lots and lots of um, degrees, lots of achievement done by our students. Um, looking at it now, the latest figures, we're around 20,000 students at Edinburgh and APR from around 130 different um, countries. Actually, on campus, we've got 13,500 students studying with us. So as you can see, um, the rest of the students are either partner universities or studying online. So quite a mix of students and quite a lot of um, different modes of study. We have, again, quite a few students who come in on a blended way, which means that they only come into the university, um, perhaps on a monthly basis. Um, but the rest of the time they're studying um, with the materials online. So lots of opportunity and students spread throughout the world. OK, so having given you the background to Edinburgh and Napier, having given you the background to Edinburgh and the background to Scotland, let me tell you a little bit about um, Global Online. Um, Global Online is um, really just the branding of all our online programmes. Um, currently, we have six um, online programmes, um, which the MSc Business Management is, as I said, one of the most successful programmes. But we, we have new ones coming on all the time. Um, so again, your Stafford um, consultant can support you with that. Um, but obviously, this is a fantastic programme for people who who really want to have a programme to fit into a flexible lifestyle. Um, and are, are, are people who maybe can't study all every single week, but maybe want to fit it into several weeks throughout the term. And, and what you'll find is that our programme can offer that flexibility. And is, um, so Global Online is really telling everyone um, that the programmes that are underneath its umbrella are really those designed to support um, people with uh, who are juggling their personal work and life commitments and making it accessible to people who just cannot come in to our campus. Um, what you find what's fantastic about global online programmes is there's a consistent framework and I can show you what that looks like. I can show you what each individual module is structured like so that there's no surprises when you actually start taking the module. Um, we have some amazing unique features about the programme as well. Um, two things that spring to mind is this idea of the global online map. Um, we took a picture of this global online map at the very start when it was first used. Obviously, when you join the programme, you can see that there's you know, quite a few students who have now pinned themselves to the map. And in fact, what's great about the map is it can let you meet students who are in the same location as you so that you can you can perhaps pair up, support each other as well through um, through through text or th through some other web chat. So it's it's really useful. And actually, I found a few of my students met each other. They were in the same work organization, but they didn't know they were actually both doing the program and they actually realized that through the global on mind map. So it's a really good tool to look at. And you can find that on the program page for the for, for them for the program. Um, we also have an Ask Ben. Ask Ben is a, is a tool that you can use. Um, it's an intelligent agent, so you can ask it anything. For example, you might ask it when your, your coursework is due in. You might ask it, um, uh, how do you defer your assessment? And Ask Ben has all the answers so that 
if the team who support you, global online support, are not available, and they are available usually between the hours of nine to five in the UK, but if they're not available, then Ask Ben can also help you, or you can immediately drop them an email and they will respond, and they respond very quickly to any issues that you might have. Okay, so I think I said earlier to you about our global map and about where our students come from and I'm sure that it's much bigger than this now actually um, but you can see that students are grouped into certain different um, key continental areas so we've got the Americas here and we've got quite a lot of students studying in the Caribbean um, so they bring a lot of sunshine um, to the studies and um, so they're based out there and lots of the little islands. It's a great opportunity for them um, to join a much larger um, institution and get um, a quality degree like we are offering at Edinburgh Napier. Um, in terms of Europe, we're pretty much based in most of the countries in Europe, um, just a few listed. Um, but again, it's, it, it's, it's pretty widespread out from Austria to Norway to Portugal. Um, in terms of Africa, and I know some of you are from Africa today, which is amazing. Um, I'm finding that I'm getting more and more um, students coming from Africa. Um, and, and, and it's just wonderful to, to meet the students, um, particularly from places like South Africa and Nigeria. I've noticed I've got quite a few students coming from there, which is great. Um, for some of you, you'll be based again in the Middle East, and we do again have quite a few students um, from the Middle East, and um, particularly um, United Arab Emirates, of course, and, and Dubai. Um, and then there's also Asia and Australasia as well. So we have students that are um, studying from Sri Lanka. We've got a lot, actually, um, quite a lot of students from Sri Lanka. Um, we have students from um, New Zealand as well and of course Australia and what's lovely is sometimes they get on the plane when they graduate and they come for graduation and that's just amazing to see them and of course when you graduate you are more than welcome to come and visit us and um, so now I'm just going to move on a little bit to talk about um, the actual MSc business management program itself and the structure of the program this will just fill you in um, so there's a generalist route through the program, which means that every single module listed here you will take. Um, and they're all considered 20 credits, except the dissertation. And remember, when it's 20 credits, that means 200 hours of learning that you need to engage in to complete your module. And um, you will obviously get support on a weekly basis by the tutors, by the module leaders on each of these modules. I think this is a really eclectic mix, a really exciting mix of topics that you get to do as you move through the programme. For instance, you get to do um, a combination of leadership strategy and how you handle that in innovation. You get to look at organisational change in management. I think that's just really fundamental now. Most of us are in organisations where change has become um, something that we've got used to at the same time how do you manage that change well enough how do you communicate with people make sure they're on board with the ideas um, that you're bringing about to the organization and um, fantastic that you look at economics and finance you're looking at the, the much larger um, areas um, of the economy but also focusing in on the finances and, and the smaller um, organizations that you work. Um, we have a module called Creating Business Excellence in Marketing that looks at the idea of a balanced scorecard. It looks at different areas for creating business excellence, including um, sustainability, and also how that relates to the marketing function. And you get to, to really focus in on the marketing function on that module. My own module is Managing Innovation. As I said, it's available on the general route. You can also see it on the entrepreneurship route as well. Um, and this module really focuses in on how do we manage innovation over time and how do we break that down to make it more manageable. Um, another really exciting module that I, th I think that you get that opportunity to take is Contemporary Issues in Strategic Management. And basically that module allows you to reflect and look at some of the issues that are going on um, in the organisation today. Um, Finally, once you've done your top modules, you get to do a research methods module, which prepares you for your final dissertation. And your final dissertation is a double 
um, module, which is 40 credits, and it allows you to look in depth at an area of your choice. Um, so, for example, if you really enjoyed an, um, something around managing innovation, then you might look at that as part of your final dissertation. And again, if you're on the generous route and you've really enjoyed some a, a, a strategic management issue or an HR issue like leadership styles, then you might focus on that in terms of your MSc dissertation. There is several exit points um, at the very basic exit point is that you leave with a, a certificate of credit and you have a and you've completed a module such as managing innovation and um, if you stay on and do three modules with us you can leave with a postgraduate certificate so you're leaving with 60 credits and um, if you go into the diploma, well, that's 120 credits. So you haven't quite done the research methods or the dissertation. You would need to do them if you wanted to do the full complete MSc. And what we find is nearly everyone does a full complete MSc. Very few people leave at diploma stage, but if they do, um, it's usually for a good reason, um, such as um, health reasons, etc. But most people aim to complete the full degree. Okay, so as I said, there is a general route through the MSc Business Management, which you can take, and you take the modules as you previously saw. However, we actually offer, and I think this is amazing, 10 specialist routes through the programme. So you can swap out the managing innovation, you can swap out um, the contemporary issues in strategic management, and you can take the following um, modules and also do your your final dissertation on a topic related to the following with roots. So the first one to know is banking, the MSc banking. So people undertaking that get to do global finance and they get to do financial markets, institutions and banking. Really, really useful degree for those who want to move into that area or already in that area at the moment. Um, as I said, MSc Entrepreneurship, this tends to attract people who are wanting to start up their own vis business or want to be more entrepreneurial, make entrepreneurial changes within their own organisation. Um, MSc Events Management, we have International Business Events Management and International Festival and Events Management, two really interesting um, modules. And of course, don't forget um, that in terms of festivals and events, um, Edinburgh Napier is one of the best known in the whole world and um, because of the amount of festivals that the, the actual um, Edinburgh itself supports. So we're well known and people come from all over the world to be able to undertake those um, undertake um, events management training here, here in the university. Um, we've also got an MSc in finance which allows you to do global finance and finance for management decision makers. Um, MSc HRM, again, we do have a full MSc business management, sorry, a full MSc in HRM, but again, if you do the MSc business management in HRM, you get the opportunity to combine both new knowledge about business management and HRM. So I think it's quite a nice um, hybrid type experience where you get the opportunity to study both types of modules. Um, MSc Hospitality and Tourism, and again, you get to study international business events management and contemporary issues in hospital management. Moving on now, our latest edition um, is the MSc Information Systems Strategy and Governance. And interesting because of all the options here, that's actually taught by um, the Computing Science Department. Um, so really, really interesting. And you cover security audits and compliance during that with route. And of course, you do your dissertation um, with academics in the computing school. And um, MSc Logistics and Supply Chain Management, again, we cover supply chains, project management, and this is really good for people who are involved in logistics in their organisation. MSc Marketing and Sales, um, you will be looking at marketing, but from a global perspective, and also learning some techniques to support your ability to sell um, in, the, in the workplace. And finally, MSc Project Management allows you, again, to have the opportunity to study managing innovation, but again, tied up to project management, which again, really both provide useful skills for you and your organization and hopefully will help you lead to promotion. Because what I notice is lots of the students who take this program, either before they finish or just after they finish, get promoted in their workplace, which is an amazing thing to see. Okay, let's have a quick look at um, 
some of the online resources that we've got. What you'll find is as soon as you register on the program, you get the opportunity to experience our online induction. And um, the online induction offers you so much in terms of background information. And um, it really shows you how to behave and the regulations and how best to get the most out of your online studies. So definitely global online induction would be the first area that I would encourage you to look at um, when you register on the program. Once you're happy and you've gone through the induction, then I would go to the global online MSc business management page. I would connect with other students on the program. Um, there's a forum there and um, follow any discussions that's going on. Try and reach out. As we said, there's a map on there where you can see if anybody from your country is actually currently studying on the program. And then finally, um, move on to your modules. And you can see here, this is my module page. And um, all module pages are structured, as I said, in a particular way to support you, support your learning and allow you to move through it clearly yourself. So let's move on just to find out a bit more about the program structure. Um, you are strongly encouraged to study two modules per trimester. For some people, um, their work commitment is such that they can only study the one. That is perfectly fine. But do keep an eye on your studies and make sure that you can complete in, in a time that's suitable to you. Um, in terms of some of the optional modules which you saw, and I'll just flip back and just um, show you some of the optional modules that you can see on this page. They may be only run once, maybe twice a year. So you just have to keep that in mind. Sometimes people start on their optional modules um, just so that they, 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 they have them completed. Okay, so um, as I said, your studies are going to include the induction, direct access to lots of global online resources, and you will also have a predetermined weekly surgery session for each of your modules to allow you to come on, speak to your tutor, speak to your module leaders and ask some questions of. Usually it's around the assessment, sometimes it's around the learning materials themselves. So. What does the framework look for you on each module? Well, each module is broken down into 11 units. Um, the first um, unit is just an overview and a short welcome video for module leaders. And then, there be and then you'll see 10 subject specific units. So you'll be able to see learning outcomes for each unit. You'll see an introduction, you'll see prescribed reading, you'll see self-assessment questions and reflective exercises. You'll see end of unit summary and you'll see end of unit progress test. Okay, so quite a lot there for you as you move through the, each and individual modules. We've also got a set of further reading to explore the topics as they're covered in each unit in more um, depth. And they're available electronically for you so that you can download them. And you can also get in touch with our amazing librarian who's always happy to support you. So carrying on about the, the standard framework, what you'll see in each module, you will also see the discussion topics, You'll get to see some case studies with outline solutions. You'll get to see assessments available right from the start of the trimester so that you can plan when you submit. Some of my students submit several weeks in advance of their final deadline because of their commitments. I've had students who have been on perpetual cruise ships. I've had students in nuclear power plants. I've had students in the army. And so they, they really welcome that flexibility. You also have outline solutions and sample assessments as well to look at. And of course, don't forget that weekly, weekly WebEx sessions. So what does the actual academic year look for you, look like for you when you study with us? Here you can see that we see it as breaking down into five trimesters. And uh, the first trimester you would study one or two modules. Second trimester um, you would study one or two modules. Third trimester, you would study two modules. Fourth trimester, you would move on to study your research methods. Note that you have to finish all your modules before you move on to do your research methods. And this is just really exploring the tools and the techniques that you will use to undertake your major dissertation project um, in the final trimester. Now, the final trimester can you're very lucky being part-time because you can take two um, trimesters to actually complete the dissertation project. Here is, again, some indication of what your week would look, be, look like on each of the modules. So you'll have access to individual module materials on the VLE. 
Um, you'll have your induction and you'll start your studies. Um, you'll move through your studies between weeks two and 12. You'll have a bit of revision in the final week and also be supported to write your final assessment, which in most cases is due in week 14. You might find that one, maximum two, mod maximum two modules have an inter-semester um, piece of coursework. So that's just something that the module leader will always make you aware of and you'll submit that by the deadline that they request. In terms of virtual support and activities, you'll see your programme team are always there to support you. There'll be weekly activities with your module team. Um, we've recorded a whole series of videos for you to watch. You can watch them all at one time or you can watch them as you progress through. You may also see other people come online to speak to you, such as the librarian or the academic skills um, tutor. And you can have a one-to-one -one appointment with the academic skills tutor at any point so just let us know and we'll, we'll put you in touch with them okay and um, in terms of what the module looks like as i said here's my module managing innovation um each module has an introductory video interestingly enough each module has an edinburgh clock to so that you know exactly what time it is in the uk and um, i think this is really important because it means that if you send me an email it may be much earlier or uh, in your country and um, but it may be too late for me to respond that day so just keep that in mind there's weekly bite-sized learning taking place. I think, as I said earlier, you will move through each of the units. Here you can see the workbook that you use, the reading material, and the end of unit progress tests. So you've got some tests at the end. You also have self-assessment questions that you can go through. And each video, each unit has a video. So some places to interact for you, you've got academic discussion forums where you can talk, you have chat forums, and of course, every week we have our WebEx session. Even if you can't make it long, you'll see that we either have transcripts or we record it for you to look at it at another day in time. We also have reflective responses captured in a workbook as well, which I think is great. What people do with the reflective workbook is they capture their thoughts throughout the programme on each of the modules and then they can download them, take that away with them at the end of the programme. And then they've got some deeper ideas that perhaps they've been thinking about as they've been moving through the programme, which is amazing. And in terms of who you will meet on the programme, you'll meet your module leader, you'll meet, you, meet your online tutor, you'll meet your support team. Um, and um, make sure that when you communicate to them, you, you don't use your personal email, but you use your university email. That means that you'll get um, the correct responses. OK. Um, entry requirements for doing the degree. Um, it's just your typical bachelor's honours degree, two, two or above. Um, but if you're worried about that, please do talk to Stafford about that. We're not bothered of what background you have either. So if you're currently in another area, but you want to move into it, I've had a few people who have been in healthcare who just want to move into a more general business management role, um, and we're happy to support them through the programme. Um, we can also consider lesser qualifications if you've got sufficient professional work experience. So don't forget about that. And in terms of English language requirements, again, if English is not your first language, then you probably need to undertake an improved English language test. But again, Stafford, your advisors can give you all that information, all that background. I want to just really just, I'm almost finished, but I want to just say a little bit about some feedback that I've had on my module. Um, I, I continue to get such high quality feedback, but again, here's some, some feedback. I'm impressed with the NU and our teaching. You bring the classroom to my living room. Thank you very much for your feedback and excellent support. It was a pleasure meeting you. Thanks for always being there. Thanks for clarifying. Thank you so much. It was a great module. I've really enjoyed it. Really opened my eyes. Thoroughly enjoyed the module. You gave us excellent support. As an airline pilot who had limited exposure in the business environment, truly grateful for the guidance given by you, which I followed in the forums. Okay, so as you can see, we really, really put a lot of effort in to support you. Okay, um, last thing really that I want to say is about um, the tuition fees. So Stafford are amazing because they actually give you um, usd 1000 grant which which i think is just absolutely amazing but if you want any more details about the degree structure can i get you to contact your stafford consultant um, and they'll fill you in on all the details the main thing for you to remember though is that the application deadline for the program is the 9th of may 
2019 and then we start it's the 20th of may as far as i as i can recall um with you on your studies so we're really looking forward to you starting okay so um helen's going to come back and helen um i'm happy to answer any questions um and thank you everyone for listening Excellent. Thank you so much, uh, Jackie. And I can see that there are quite a few questions already, so I'm Great. going to ask one that's not using them. Um, Albeck, uh, yes, uh, the presentation actually will be available, so um, either your consultant or myself will be able to send you the link um, to this presentation. So if you have missed something, don't worry, that will be sent through to you. Okay. Um, how long can I actually take to complete my MSc? Uh, what is the maximum duration? Um, at the moment, and this doesn't mean to say the regulations won't change, but at the moment there is no set time for you to complete. However, obviously you have a limited amount of time to do your modules. So for a, for example, if you fail your modules, then you'll, you'll need to do your reassessment within a, a set time frame. Um, also, in terms of your actual dissertation, um, as I said, there'll be that'll be two terms. But if you decided to do one module at a time at the moment, then that would be absolutely fine and you wouldn't be stopped from doing that. But as I said, if that changes, then Stafford or myself will communicate that with you. Okay. Um, and I see there's about three or four questions uh, pertaining to the English requirements. Um, uh -huh. So I'm just going to group that. Um, basically, the, the questions revolves around their undergraduate degree. So if the undergraduate mm -hmm. degree has been completed um, in English uh, from a university, um, is there any other proof of English that would be required or will this be accepted? Um, what they need to do is they need to apply, don't they, Helen? But I guess they can get support from you as well and you would contact admissions on their behalf. Um, but they just have to apply. And if there's any query about that, then obviously the applications, the admissions would get back in touch with them. Yeah, and, and Dr. Jackie is quite uh, correct about that. Um, do send us your application documents um, and uh, that actually gets assessed uh, directly by the admissions office. Um, and is it imperative that I actually attend induction and why should I, in your opinion, actually attend this induction? So the induction is totally online. And you can undergo the induction at your own pace. Um, some people dip in and out of it, actually, as they go on in the program. However, I think it is really useful for you to understand about the rules, regulations of the university as you progress through the program. It also explains some of the complexities of studying online. And I just think that it's a really beneficial tool. It's not compulsory, though. So some students, um, they, they always tell me they regret that they didn't look at it sooner, though, because you will enjoy the information it's, it can provide for you, particularly if you've never studied in the UK before. Some of the terminology, some of the, the, the discussions, um, words that are used by your academics, um, then the induction will support you in that. Okay, and if I cannot submit an assignment on the due date uh, due to some unforeseen circumstances, do I get an extension? Um, how flexible is the university on this? You have to tell us, obviously, if you can, you have to tell us in advance. That's much preferable than telling us afterwards. Um, it, it, you would have to go for um, deferral of your assessment if you think that it's serious enough, not um, that you will not be able to do it within a 10-day extension period. But we are able, as module leaders, to give you up to 10 days. So as long as you tell us in advance, we can give you that as long as you explain what the issue is. So there's lots of different ways that we can support you around that. But again, as soon as you know there's going to be a problem, get in touch with your tutor, get in touch with your module leader, and we'll support you with that. And even after the fact, we can we can support you, but there's only a limited amount of time after submission that we can support you <coughs> to apply um, to, for a deferral of that assessment. 
Okay, and the next question is actually quite popular. Um, can I get a double major? So I start off with the MEC in business management and then perhaps transfer my credits to an MEC in HR, for example. Um, is that permitted by the university? Um, you could, you, you won't be able to transfer your credits, but you're certainly able to do the MSc business management. And then if the program lead out of the MSc HR, because we do have an MSc in HR and it is online, allows you to, then you could go on to that program, but you wouldn't be transferring any, any necessarily any credits between the two programs because they're, they're different. Okay. Um, and with regards to fees and scholarships, please do get in touch with your academic consultant and they will be able to give you the fee structure. We do have very, very flexible uh, monthly payment terms. Okay. Right. Um, I have completed my postgraduate uh, uh, diploma in business from a university in Nigeria. Uh, do I get any credits? And if so, how many? You need to give it to Helen first and Helen can have a look at it and then you need to send it to admissions and then admissions would look at that in detail. They need to look at the background of that university. They need to compare the level of your studies. So we can't say for certain that the learning outcomes of those modules would match the learning outcomes of any of the modules on our programme. Right. And that, just to add on to that, it is imperative that you do submit um, a, a, the learning outcomes um, of, of what you have completed. Because again, as Dr. Jackie said, they'll be able to map it to see that they are similar so that you can get possible credits. OK, yeah. um, but do get in touch with your academic consultant. They can give you a bit more advice on that. OK. Um, all right, so the next one is, um, can I actually undertake one core and one optional module at the same time? Of course you can. Um, for instance, if you're doing the MSc Business Management and Entrepreneurship, um, you might be taking Managing Innovation, uh, which would be the option on that program and you may also be doing a core you might be doing organizational change management not a problem at all as soon as you um, register to do the program you can speak to Stafford or you can speak to global online support and they'll tell you what options are running that um, that trimester and then you can choose what op um, modules that you will be doing you will be supported and usually directed to se several modules that we know will be a good start for you but there will be options Okay, and if I do fail an assignment, do I get a critical review so I know where I have gone wrong and I can then redo that assignment? So, when you log on to look at your assignment and you have failed, there will be quite extensive feedback from your module leader. Um, there will be a double marker, so there'll be double marker comments. And please rest assured, your work will also be sent to an external examiner to look at as well, because it's a fail and all fails will be looked at by an external examiner. And they may well also have input for the module leader. So by all means, um, go on, have a look at your feedback. If there's part of your feedback you don't understand, then get in touch um, with your module leader. You may also want to speak to the um, academic skills tutors as well, who may be able to give you further support so that you can adapt or, or change um, your assignment for resubmission. Okay, and are there any external bodies that do accredit this MEC? Um, we don't have any accreditation at the moment. We are, as, an, as a university, as a business school, moving towards AECSB accreditation, but we've not achieved that yet. Okay, and uh, what is the maximum time period that I can suspend my studies if I find that I have a lot of uh, work that I need to get through and I cannot continue with my studies? How long can I suspend these studies for? Um, you can suspend for two years. Obviously, there might be certain circumstances that people suspend for longer, um, but most people only suspend for six months, maybe a year. Um, 
And so we keep checking in with you and finding out when you intend to come back. So don't worry about that. That process um, is fairly smooth and we keep in touch with you until you return to your studies. Um, I understand that my tutors are available to me um, on the study portal. However, if I want to discuss something in private with my tutor, can I phone them or Skype them? You would need to organise with the tutor. Different tutors obviously are available at different times. Some of them are not actually based on campus. Um, but most people would be happy to do that or they would be happy to receive an email from you and start a, a private email correspondence. Particularly if you're at different times in, in the world, then an email correspondence I think works out best because you've got the written response. Okay, and uh, what is your pass mark for a late submission? Okay, so a late submission is capped at what we call a P1, so it would be a pass one. And um, numerically, if you were trying to think of, about that in numbers, it would be between a 50 to a 54. But we wouldn't normally talk about it like that. We normally just talk about it as a P1. Okay, and oh, this is an interesting question. Why are there no examinations in this MSc like any other traditional MSc out there? That's really interesting, actually. Um, it's actually one of the features that students actually choose um, to do the programme because of that level of flexibility. We used to have exams, but they didn't work very well for our students. We had people starting an exam at 6 a.m. in the morning and another person starting at 11 a.m. In, in the evening. Um, so it really didn't fit into the lifestyle. And really what we're trying to do is support your lifestyle. We're also not into rote re learning. We're not trying to get you to memorize anything for a lot for a lengthy period of time we want you to interact we want you to engage we want to give you time to think about the material and to write that final case study or report in your own words so that's why we have no exams on our program and in fact you'll find that most of the modules on campus now decided that it was such a good way to assess that they are actually have no exams either excellent excellent on the MSc and the MBA yeah Excellent. And um, I have also been informed. Uh, oh, sorry, this is about the induction again. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, why is this so important to actually attend the induction? Okay, so we've actually yeah. covered. Um, we have. I do not have an undergraduate degree. So um, is there any way that I will be accepted based on my vast years of working experience? Excellent. If you've got vast years of, of work experience at a certain level, a managerial level, then we will probably be very happy to take you. But we need you to write that down. We need you to capture that and put that in your application. I know that Helen, Helen's team are there to support you and to frame what you say so that you've got the best opportunity to be accepted on the programme. Because we don't want you to have to go back to do the undergraduate program and if you've got the right skills to be able to undertake the um, postgraduate qualification. Yeah. Excellent. Absolutely. Uh, please ensure that your CV is very strong and that all your roles mm. and responsibilities are clearly mm. defined because that's mm. exactly what the university will look yeah. at. The other thing that you need to consider is a very, very strong personal statement mm -hmm. as to why you wish to actually undertake the, mm -hmm. the program. Mm -hmm. Okay, so all that does, uh, you know, t get taken into account. Okay. That's great. That's good. Um, and so uh, why, oh, can I actually do uh, this program on a fast track option? Um, is this advisable as I do have quite a lot of work that I need to get through, but is this advisable in your opinion? Um, no, <laughs> and you can't anyway. We wouldn't advise or recommend or, or anyone to try and attempt any more than two modules at a time. That seems to be what you're able to do because as I said previously, a module is 200 hours of learning. If you do two modules, you are expected to study for 400 hours of learning plus your personal life, plus your work life. And we find that's enough. Um, so we don't allow, uh, we really would restrict that and not allow anyone to do any more than two. It is considered a part-time program after all. On campus, the students are studying three modules at a time. Yeah. 
And what type of resources are available to us? Um, do we get access to um, an online library like other traditional universities? Uh, do I need to buy any textbooks? Fantastic news for you. You do not need to buy any textbooks. Occasionally, students do decide to, because they really love the book and they want to keep it way beyond their studies. But um, no, all the material that you will need to complete your courses will be available to you online. You will get a card sent out to you. Um, that card will be your library card and your student card. Um, it means that if you do visit on campus, you can access the library here, for example, and you'll be able to study fully online using all the electronic resources and you'll have access to the librarian, the same as any student on campus. Okay, and uh, is there any way that I can come and visit uh, the tutors on the campus? Um, and uh, the second question from the same person mm -hmm. is, uh, can I attend the graduation at the campus? So let's start with graduation. We'd love you to come to graduation. Just make sure that you get your visa in on time, but we can usually even help. If you need any documents um, sent to you that will help you get your visa, then please do that. We always have a party um, the day before graduation. You are so welcome to come on and meet other online students. And of course, we're there for you on graduation day. And we get so much pleasure from you being here on campus for your graduation. We actually graduate down at Usher Hall, very prestigious um, building in the middle of Edinburgh. Really lovely building. Have a look at our previous graduation ceremonies and you'll see what I mean. Um, and your other question, sorry, Helen, the other question? Um, the, other, the second question is, no, uh, can yeah, I actually sure. attend, uh, that, was, that was the graduation, but can yeah. I actually come through to the campus and mm. see the teachers on the campus? So, for example, um, I've had a few people come and visit me. Um, I've taken them on tours, actually. If you give people enough notice and they're around, particularly um, during the summer, you might find they're, that the, they're on campus and they're not teaching, then I'm sure they would make themselves available to see you. I know myself, my colleague, Mamad Bager as well, very happy for people to, to knock on our door. I've actually had students on the online programme just knock on my door and come in and see me. I wouldn't advise that, though. I would always say maybe make an appointment or let me know you're coming so I can set time aside to spend with you. Global Online will set time aside. We've sat, we've had coffee with people, we've shown them around. We would love you to come and see us. It's fantastic. Excellent. And um, can you tell me if we have any live lectures uh, in the event that I may miss something? Um, is that part of your study uh, system? Basically, you have short snippets of um, the lecturer speaking, but the but but everything that you need is in written form. It's written down so that you can take your time and go through it. You have your weekly webinars, so that's an hour. So on campus, you would have a two-hour lecture, but you get an hour um, webinar plus all the additional reading that you need. So your experience is not impoverished, but in fact, um, students who have moved between, some students have occasionally moved from the MSc on campus to my program, have noted the better structure, um, the greater support. So there's a lot of positives to the way that you're much more flexibly able to study your program. Okay, and the very last question is, how many hours should I actually dedicate to this program per week? Uh, bearing in mind that I am married and I have three kids, um, how, how do you actually study this? Um, I would say um, often, but for some people they might study more. So if you've got your 200 hours and say you're going to be studying um, say take it 10 weeks then that would equate to 20 hours a week but for some people they do more so they take some time off their work and do a bit more and for some weeks they don't do as much so again it's really what fits into your lifestyle and and and, and how it fits best with you excellent okay so we've managed to actually group all the questions together yeah excellent thank you, 
thank you so much for all your questions and for attending. Um, as I have said, uh, this uh, webinar link will be sent through to you. So if you have missed anything um, throughout this evening, you can review it. And as Dr. Jackie has said, it's imperative that you start actually sending your application in. There are limited places available and the application deadline is the 9th of May, which is really not very far away. So I do advise that you get in touch with your academic consultant to assist you to get all the documents in on time. Okay. Again, Dr. Jackie, thank you so much. It was a great pleasure having you with us again this evening. Thank you, Helen. Thank you, everyone. And I really look forward to seeing you on the 20th of May when you start your new program. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Thank all right. Good evening. Bye. Bye.